Our first speaker this afternoon is Maria Elena campus Teggy. She is the principal and senior executive of the Metropolitan Group. She has more than 30 years of professional experience in strategic communication, narrative change, and public will building in the United States and internationally. She is passionate about designing approaches that allow people from diverse cultural backgrounds, perspectives, and experiences to create a shared vision and strategies and messages to bring that vision to life. To set the stage for our discussion today, Ms. Campus Teggy's topic, The Power of Narrative to Change Education and Society. Narratives are the mutually reinforcing stories consistently repeated and reproduced in a culture or society that carry social norms and collectively convey a particular worldview. Narratives change hearts and minds, and in doing so, have the power to justify the status quo, erase the history of, of others, determine who has voice and who does not. Narratives are fed by media, politics, pop culture, and public art. They are visible in how lesson plans are taught and in the textbooks that are used. This presentation explores the power of narratives and the opportunity to replace the current dominant narrative about American Indians, which is largely false, harmful, and controlled by non-Native people, with one designed by Native storytellers and artists that is based on strength and resilience. Ms. Kapitegi talk sets the stage for our symposium discussions and remind us that as educators, we too move hearts and minds and have the power to harness the power of narrative in schools across America to speak about American Indian people and tribes. So let's welcome Ms. Kapi, Ms. Kapisegi to the stage. <laughs> There you go. Thank you. Buenas tardes. Since this is the Museum of the, of the American uh, Indian, I will speak in also in my native Spanish. Es un honor de estar con ustedes esta tarde. I'm honored to be here today in support of the growing movement to transform what and how teachers teach and what students learn about native peoples. All students can benefit from a more accurate and inclusive understanding of their history, and this is especially true for Native American students who grow up surrounded by harmful narratives that render Native peoples as largely invisible on a day-to-day -day basis or depicted by negative and false stereotypes. So my role this afternoon is to ensure that we all have the same understanding of what is a narrative, how a dominant narrative has the power to give voice to some and take away voice from others, and the very important role that you as educators play either reinforcing or interrupting dominant narratives. And this hopefully sets the stage for the acclaimed speakers that follow me today. So narratives are mutually reinforcing stories that when consistently shared in a culture or society collectively convey a particular worldview. They set context and they shape social norms. A narrative becomes dominant because it's repeated and reproduced over and over. The speakers of the narrative are perceived to have authority. And because the narrative conveys only one viewpoint, silencing or making invisible any alternative accounts. So a dominant narrative is what a large part of a society believes to be true. Narratives appear and therefore reinforce each other across a variety of mediums. They're visible in what is covered by the media, how stories are framed, whose stories are told, and by whom. In movie plots and cartoons, in political speeches and interviews, in pop culture, entertainment, public art, sometimes even tourist spots. They do appear in textbooks, and narratives are present in curricula and lesson plans. 
To illustrate narrative, I'm going to share an example of a dominant narrative in the United States in the 1950s and 60s, and even into the 1970s. This narrative carried strong gender roles and showed how each gender was to think, act, and engage with each other. Magazine ads, movies, television, often depicted men as intelligent, assertive, dominant, and sexually aggressive, and women, frequently portrayed as being the opposite. How many silent movies or romantic comedies can you think of where guy kisses girl, girl pushes him away, guy kisses harder, girl lifts her leg up, and falls in love? And schools help to reinforce this narrative by steering girls into home economics and typing and by t sending boys off to math and science classes. So the majority of population starts to believe that this is how women ought to be because stories that we hear over and over from many different places become sources of knowledge. They create a shortcut to understanding the world around us and help us interpret situations. They teach us how to act in the right way, which might also mean not taking action at all. So how do narratives give or take power of voice? Narratives change hearts and minds. They often have the power to justify the status quo, erase the history of others, determine who has voice and who does not. But narratives can also be very empowering. They're the most empowering tool to advance change in almost every social movement, every major social movement, narratives have been at the core of creating social change and shifting power of voice. So to create lasting social change on any issue and shape a new reality, we have to change the status quo and what people expect from their society. The status quo is maintained by those who create and control the dominant narrative. As educators, you collectively have the power to reinforce or interrupt dominant narratives because what's taught in classrooms across the country helps to form people's perception. And those perception influence attitude, behaviors, and they help shape systems and policies. The largest public opinion initiative ever conducted in Indian country was recently completed. The research engaged nearly 20,000 people across the United States to study Americans' perceptions and understanding about Native American peoples. Dr. Stephanie Freiberg, who you will meet shortly, was a lead researcher. Overall, the research findings pointed to a dominant narrative about Native peoples that exists in our country today. It's a very public story that is very deficit-based. And what that means is that it's focused on problems and disparities. It's punctuated by a toxic combination of the invisibility of Native Americans in everyday life and pervasive stereotypes and misperceptions. An astonishing 40% of Americans believe Native Americans do not exist today. How does that invisibility impact a young person? And how do pervasive, false, and negative stereotypes contribute to deep-rooted biases, institutional racism, and discrimination in policies? So if my technology aligns, I'd like to share a brief video with you to bring in the voices of Native peoples, especially young people, talking about how the current narrative impacts them. The video, I think, will also provide you with a glimpse into what this narrative looks, sounds, and feels like in mediums such as movies, cartoons, and sports vi uh, venues. This was a video that was created to launch the research that I just mentioned. Can we play it? Indians. Welcome. Welcome. They get dogged openly because everybody thinks they're dead. Indians don't talk like that. These 
girls are not all dead, all right? The idea of invisibility and non-representation is, I think it's a little complicated. Yes, they fought savagely, for they were a primitive people, and self-preservation is a primitive instinct. I think the representation isn't so much on Native people, it's how non-Native view Native. I live in a house. House. Not not TP, like a house. <laughs> As a native woman, we're very hypersexualized um, and romanticized. So I think that affects us in academics to just everyday life. They expect you to fit into this form that they would like, and when you don't, they silence your voice. When it comes to mainstream media, we have this one narrative of history, and but everybody, every culture has their narrative and history. That diminishes our youth self-esteem because they're like, what's the point? It seems like it's designed to, to devalue us as Native peoples. If you never see a Native person portrayed as a human, a normal human, and you never meet one, 2% of the people are Native, every time I see them, they're on TV talking magic talk, then you don't see them as human. It's easier to perform a crime on someone that you think is not human. If you're always having misconceptions like mirrored back to yourself, then it's harder to get a grasp on your identity or it tells you that your identity is invalid. It's tough for me to even really imagine this system sort of valuing other cultures, I guess. When we see ourselves or our perception of what society thinks of us on TV or the radio or in mascots and whatever the case is that we automatically feel like we have to be in that slot like we're automatically seen as that and so might as well be that to add value to our people would be to have people involved as far as designing a society that we all get along in and that we all can share truths about each other instead of propaganda the worst that could happen is people would stop hating people for no reason and if that's all that happens by getting rid of negative stereotypes, that would be great, but there's so much more. I wonder if we need to get out in the world and actually have human conversations and ask people who don't look like us and don't think like us and don't live near us how they interpret the world. All right. Well, yeah, I, I definitely feel like education is important and I want my children to grow and you know get great educations. Whenever I was able to like get out and you know and learn and read and you know research on my own, it just it does make you resentful. It makes you feel like dang, like you know, should I can I even can I even trust y'all with my kids or, because there's so much left out. People are ready to to hear our stories. People are ready to um, learn about our cultures by using story and injecting native people into story that humanizes them, that makes them just another person in the story and not stand out because of their nativeness. Oh, it's really important that we work together for new narratives. We have so many opportunities and it's really beautiful seeing indigenous people be seen and heard and uniting with all of us, just telling our stories and sharing through our histories. So in addition to providing empirical evidence of a dominant narrative about Native peoples, the research also identified pathways to change. And one of the most prevalent was K-12 education. Nearly half of Americans say that what they were taught in schools about Native Americans was inaccurate. 72% say it's necessary to make significant changes to the school curriculum on Native American history and culture. In focus groups, teachers rated history of Native American peoples and pre-Columbian American history and culture as two of the worst subjects in terms of coverage and accuracy. This is not so surprising 
based on the number of states whose academic standards do not mention Native Americans beyond the 1900s. Or worse, we have states that specifically do not name any individual Native Americans in their standards at all. And Dr. Sarah Shear um, will talk more about her work this afternoon. So armed with research, Native American artists, storytellers, and advocates help to create a new narrative. It's composed of three components that must always be used together. Shared values, accurate history, and visibility and accomplishments of contemporary Native peoples. We tested this narrative nationally we covered all of our bases. Um, we spanned all age groups, all genders, political ideologies, race and ethnicity in different parts of the country. And we experienced dramatic differences in attitudes towards Native American peoples and issues between who, um, who was exposed to this language and those that were not. So the new narrative works. And you, as educators, have the opportunity to apply an authentic narrative that works and tells the full story. You can visit reclaimingnativetruth.com to download the research findings and narrative guides. Please visit. It's free. There's also so many tools and support that's being offered by the museum and Native Knowledge 360. Ed Schutman um, will tell you more shortly. So powerful status quo narratives can be challenged and changed. You have the power to either reinforce or interrupt the dominant narrative about Native American peoples. And I hope that after hearing our speakers today, you will choose to join in this movement to share truths about Native peoples in education. Thank you, thank you for your patience and enjoy the afternoon. Thank you, Maria Elena.